Hey everyone, Melanie Johnson here. Welcome to our podcast. I'm here with Jen Foster, my co-host. Hey Jen. Hey everyone. How's it going today? So we have a great show today. I've been doing real estate, oh my gosh, for a really long time, in and out, kind of like a little side hustle thing that I do and love looking at houses and all of that. So my question really is, is real estate dead? right? Everyone's on high interest rates, but if interest rates go down, our price is going to go crazy again. Do you sit on your hands and do nothing? Do you dive in and then you wish you didn't? We're going to answer all of that. We have such an expert here today. Maylee J Nelson is here with us today. And she even has a TV show with her husband, Flippin' with Mitch and Maylee. And we are going to get into this big time today. You know, I have some rental houses. I just, I've got tons of questions for you, Maylee. Thanks for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Grateful to be here. Well, tell us, Maylee, how you even got started in real estate, because I know we've known each other for a long time and you weren't in real estate when we first met. <laughs> no, we were not. You know, it life always just serves you, right? It just has a way of guiding you and you might not know why the heck you're going down a certain path, but you look back and you're like, oh yeah, that's why I had to go through that. You know, I had to go through certain parts of my entrepreneur success and failures I, when I met you, I was running a, a wellness center, right? And sexy lipo. And then I ended up actually selling that company and opening up a solar company in California. And that's, that was an incredible journey. And I became really good at sales, right? Which is real estate. So it was part of the journey and why I had to become a do that. Unfortunately, though, one day I was just walking, you know, knocking doors with some of my guys and training them and teaching them. And I stepped off the curb wrong. I felt my back kind of seize up and my left leg kind of start tingling. And I thought, oh, there's something wrong here. But then about five minutes, I fell on the ground and I mean, I was paralyzed. My left leg was completely seized up and I couldn't feel it at all. I was, ended up actually being in a wheelchair for nine months. Wow. And it, yeah, like nobody had any, like I went through so many tests and thousands of dollars spent, you know, in doctors. And they just all told me that I was kind of crazy. Like they thought I was nutty and that I was going through some kind of psychological disorder. And I'm like, my left leg is fluorescent purple. Obviously it's not me, right? Not my uh, head. <laughs> yeah, it's in my head. You know, it was so, yeah, it was so scary. And during those nine months though, you know, why I had to go through something like that was one, it was like, God just slapped me upside the head of you've got to do something different because you put all eggs in one basket. And as entrepreneurs and business owners, like that's the worst thing you can possibly do, right? Because if something does go south mm -hmm. and you're the only person running the show, like that's just set up for failure, right? You have to have replacements. You have to have duplication. You have to have, you know, just diversify in investments in general. And I didn't, right? So we lost, I had retired my ex-husband at the time and we ended up because he was retired for four years at home, right? <laughs> so he couldn't, he didn't have an income. And so- Anyway, we lost everything. I foreclosed on my house, sold my business for like nothing because I couldn't do anything really. And we ended up moving back to Utah after my back surgery. So I did get back surgery and it was exploratory back surgery. So they ended up finding a huge cyst in my back. Wow. And that's what was cutting off all my plexus nerves in my left leg. And it, they couldn't see it on any MRI or, you know, CAT scan or anything. So it was crazy, but Nevertheless, those nine months taught me that I have to do something different, right? I have to be able to provide for my family, whether I'm in a wheelchair or I'm sick, or frankly, even if I was dead, like, how am I going to take care of my kids? And so I went on a long search, right, of figuring out what I could possibly do in bed because recovery actually took quite a bit of time as well to learn how to walk again and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. And one day I actually saw a sign, I moved back to Utah. And when you go on foreclosure, you don't get to rent. <laughs> People just, you know, don't think through this kind of stuff. But you have a foreclosure on your name. You don't get to just go down to the rent, you know, oh, I'm going to go rent a, a, an apartment. No. So we moved into the basement, into my grandparents' house. <laughs> so bad, like the dungeon, you know. And going from high success to that was just, you know, life altering first off. I was really depressed and I was just trying to figure out who am I now without my career, you know. Mm -hmm. And I found a sign that just said real estate investor seeks trainee. <laughs> I was taking my kids to school and I thought it's like written in chicken scratch, right? You remember uh -huh. those, Jed, I guarantee you. Yeah. 
<laughs> have little road signs that are on the side by the stoplight. There's like a sign yeah. and real estate yeah. investor seeks trainee. And then it has a phone number and the phone number is really big. And it looks like the wrote it in marker, like super fast, you know? <laughs> It was like a fourth grader wrote it, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. But I thought, you know, one, I have nothing to lose. I have no money. I have nothing to my name. I have nothing, you know, I might as well make a phone call. So I did. I made a, that phone call and it was Dave Deal actually that answered. And and he invited me down to a workshop. I went to the workshop. It was down in Salt Lake Community College. Uh -huh. And the gentleman that was on stage was Mitch Nelson. Uh -huh. And he was doing his training. And within two hours, I went wait a second here. I've been a business owner for 14 years and I learned more about business, finance, and real estate than I had my entire years of owning my businesses. Like, right. what? I'm so mad and grateful, obviously. Yeah. And there I was sold. I was like, I've got to do this because a well-managed rental will pay me whether I'm sick or whether I'm in bed, if I'm on vacation or I'm dead. It mm -hmm. passes my kids. And so that's really what we do focus on. I know our name is Flipping with Mitch and Maylee. So fast forward a little, we did end up getting married, <laughs> the guy that was on stage, but he doesn't marry all of his students. We always have to be funny, like it's not typical. <laughs> he doesn't marry all of his students, right? And it took a, a few years of him courting you before you, yeah. he caught you, I think. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, but, but yeah, so from there, I mean, we do focus on fix and flips. But we only do fix and flips so that we can buy more rentals. Like uh -huh. that's, you know, because that's the main strategy. I feel like everyone should have a rental. Like everyone. So what do you look for in a rental? Are you doing more multifamily, like, you know, two to four units or more in a like a multifamily? Or are you doing single family? And what kind of criteria should someone be looking for? Ooh, love that question. The answer is all of it works. Nothing doesn't. <laughs> I'll just throw it out there. So <laughs> the numbers work. It works. We, I think a sweet spot is six units and partly is because if you have 20% vacancy, which is what you should count on, right. Then no matter what, it always pays like four units will always pay the mortgage. And so that's a, a wow factor, right. When it or comes mortga to mortgages. So like if you have six single family, and some of them, then the rent from all those should cover everything. Okay. Right. So six is kind of a sweet spot when it comes to multifamily. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's the case necessarily with single family, but for multifamily, I do think that six okay. is, a, is the magic number, anything over six. So we heavily do work in that kind of arena. But uh, single family, we love, but and all of our rentals are seller financed or subject to okay. specifically. So, mm -hmm. you know, so many people right now are feeling like the market, like you asked, you're like, is the market good? Like, you know, is it time still yeah. invest? The answer is, oh my gosh, yes, please. <laughs> like it's the best time to invest. And it's because there are deals. There's so many good deals out there. People are willing to do crazy, you know, seller financing deals or creative financing. And it's because they need to get rid of their home or they're in a situation where, I mean, most of us don't know this, but good old feds, right? They know what they're doing out there. They're doing a good job. <laughs> and part of what they had to do during COVID, they were forced, the banks were forced to, you know, allow people to be in forbearance. Mm -hmm. Well, because they let them to go in forbearance, it was like a year's worth to two years. So from 2020 to 2022, we saw everyone being in forbearance. What they didn't know though, was whatever that number is of two years worth of not paying the mortgage that's it's due now it, they didn't put it on oh, the back the end total amount it's not like the oh. total amount that they missed out on two years worth of not paying it's due now in full so, it they didn't put it on the back end and so we're seeing right this second more foreclosures than we've we've seen in a really long time even more than 2008 I want to get some details on the seller finance because if you're used to doing traditional finance, like I tell yeah. myself, we should look at seller finance or taking over mortgages because they're at a lesser rate, but right. then it's like, oh, well, that's too complicated. So mm -hmm. how do you do, first of all, how do you set the rate if it's a seller finance? I mean, mm -hmm. do you do it because you want to get a deal? Is it less than what you could get with a bank? And who is the administrator for that? Like who manages the payments? Is there like a company or yeah. some kind of, who does that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the good things. So some things that you would look for. First off, we have a seller finance calculator that I'm absolutely willing to give out on the show for free. So nice. definitely <laughs> in the show notes or whatever, I can give you a link to that. And that really is the 
my pride and joy. I use that calculator like religiously on everything. One, just for my own self to know my numbers and where I can buy a property at, but more importantly, to show the person that I'm buying it from because numbers don't lie and it, it makes it feel very like transparent, which it is. And it shows that we're not trying to gouge anybody. We're not trying to, you know, it's literally just, here's my numbers. <laughs> like, can you fix this? Cause it's fun. You can play with five different toggles. So um, and do you do like a five-year note with them, a 30-year note? Because totally. some seller, seller people don't want to be like, I don't want to be in this for 30 years, man. I want my right. money. So what's totally. the sweet spot of that as well? I mean, I, I won't do a deal unless it's three years or more. So personally, you know, that doesn't mean that some of our teammates and, you know, our team doesn't, but for sure, that's not something that's interesting to me. I, you know, if I can cash flow for three years, all day long, I'll take that, Right. I think five years is a, is a nice sweet spot just because that person, whoever you're going to be in this contract with is still on the mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. And you are not consuming their loan. So let's not confuse that with actually just being a subject to, so they have a loan, they're going to keep that in place. And then I'm going to just take over their payments, right? I'm not consuming their loan. And people get that very confused because it doesn't go on my credit. It doesn't affect my financial right whatsoever. My so DTS. They're not assigning the they're not assigning the mortgage to you. They're, they're assigning their mortgage. Title. They're assigning the title to me. Title. Okay. Because yep. some because I thought that was kind of a question. Is the mortgage assumable? But you're saying you don't have to go that route to actually if it's not assumable, assumable, no big deal. You okay. just say you keep the mortgage. I'm gonna get the title. I'm gonna pay you every month for your mortgage plus. So they make money, right? Whatever. So what, I'm sorry. So and, and sometimes it's, yeah. So sometimes it's, there's two sides to it. So sometimes it's, they're in a financial situation, right? Where they're going to lose their house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, last month that we just picked one up where after talking and, and negotiating and figuring out what really they needed, he kept saying he needed $65,000 to, you know, to live. And he would move to Florida where he needed to be with his family or whatever, and then we could, you know, take on the note essentially, and then just make the payments and he would sell or finance it to us or subject to it to us. And my interest rate is 2.9%. So that's amazing. He didn't, that was his mortgage rate, right? Like there was no adjustment. So he's not making anything per month, but he just wanted 65,000. And so I kept talking to him I'm like, well, what are you going to do with 65,000? And at the end of the day, he's like, well, I just need it so that I'm financially you know, I paid off my debt so that when I moved to Florida, I don't have any bills, right? I don't feel like I'm already setting up with this heavy load of bills. I just want to start a new job and like start fresh. Mm -hmm. It's like, I love that. What are your bills? He's like, well, I have a truck. I was like, well, how much is your truck? He's like $17,000. Like, well, how much is the payment? He's like $600 right now. And I don't know all the details because that seemed pretty high for that, you know, amount of truck. I ended up just, I bought a house and paid off his truck from title and that was it. So for $17,000, I bought a house, <laughs> right? Sometimes it's 2.9%. <laughs> and it's a 2.9% and it's cash flowing like $800 a month. Let's go, wow. right? Like it's fantastic. And I think that's what we miss is that, you know, we always assume we know what somebody wants, mm -hmm. but we, if you ask enough questions, right. And get really good at finding out those details of mm -hmm. why do they need to sell? What's going on? Mm -hmm. We can solve their problem. And by solving that one problem, we clean, you know, we can make a huge difference. But in that case, right, five years is a good note because in five years, he's not someone I don't feel like that is going to be in a scenario where he can't make or doesn't want to have home ownership. It's going to be very hard for him to have a home, you know, to qualify for a house if he has that mortgage still on his name. Mm -hmm. right? So he'll want it off. Yeah. So he'll want it off. So it makes perfect sense to make it a five year balloon. Now there are some people where like we consume, you know, we do a subject to, and it was their mom's house and now they're inheriting it. Right. And they're like, I don't want this house. I have nothing. I don't want anything to do with this house. You can do a 30 year note. I don't care. <laughs> like they don't care at all. Perfect. We'll keep it for 30 years then. Right. But there, there are five things that you can negotiate with seller financing. So you can negotiate down payment right? Like we just talked about, I gave the guy $17,000. That's it. Mm -hmm. You can't negotiate that with the bank, right? You don't ever get to negotiate how much you get to put down like that doesn't right. exist. So that's a huge one. 
the next one is just obviously the balloon payment, right? You'll want to be able to negotiate what that would be. The next lever would be the interest rate. You don't mm -hmm. get to negotiate that with the bank, which I love. That one's probably my favorite one to play with. And then just the term. So most people think you always have to have a 30-year term because it's a 30-year loan, but that's not the case. You can make it a 40-year term, you know, you can make it a 50, 60-year term. You can make the term as long as you want because it changes the amortization schedule, mm -hmm. right, on the calculator. And so now it can change your monthly payment, right? And then that'll dictate what your payment is, and that's the fifth toggle. So if I, all I'm looking for to kind of come back to your question on any deal, for the most part, when it comes to a rental, is just cash flow. That's it. Yeah. Just cash flow. So when you have the five year balloon, do you normally refinance with a bank or with something else? What is usually your norm when I you sell do it. you sell it after five years? Yeah. Because here's the thing when you, as an investor, for me, and this is definitely something we preach and talk about so much, is there would be no reason for me to have mortgages in my own personal name. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac will only allow you to put, you know, maximum is 10 homes you can buy. That's mm -hmm. it. Well, I don't know about you, but if the average rental income and cash flow is $400 a month right now, and it has been for a while. So sorry, but I need a lot more than 10 rentals to retire. Right? Like, well, can't you put it in money. an LLC though, instead nope. of your own name? Nope. Not even an LLC. Nope. Because you have to personally guarantee it. So absolutely not. The oh, most yeah. you can do is 10. Huh. And so that's why, you know, seller financing is such an amazing creative opportunity for everyone. And I explain this to them because a lot of times people go, well, why would you do that? It sounds like a scam. Well, let me tell you why, because I can't have more than 10 mortgages in my name and I pick up a lot of real estate. I try and buy a house a month. If that's the case, there's no way I'd be able to do that <laughs> if it was oh, through my. traditional financing. So you get to be the bank you get to leverage your amazing interest rate. And I will say that if you are just looking for a home right now and you're just like, oh my gosh, the interest rate's so high. I'm never gonna be able to afford a home. Like maybe let's stop that conversation too with what we're thinking. Because if the home has been on the market for more than 90 days, mm -hmm. truth be told, the home is probably just listed for too much. Uh -huh. right? It just probably is. And so if you can say to the list, you know, listing agent, Hey, what if I could get you, I mean, I have a buyer could be you, right. Could be whoever I have a buyer and they're willing to pay your full commission and pay your buyer exactly what, you know, it's listed for, but they do some creative ways of, you know, paying for the home. Would you be open to it? They're going to be open to it. Cause most of the time they think for whatever reason that they don't get paid as an agent mm -hmm. on a seller finance deal. It's not the case. It's never the case. And so it is a great way to kind of spawn that because some people are so excited. They make way more money by being the bank. And the United States right now as a whole, I want to say it's 50% is locked in less than 2.9% interest. Wow. Yeah. That's All right. So, so let's do like a real life example. Let's say a $200,000 house. Okay. It's listed for 200. It's been on the market for 150 days or something. And you're going to contact the agent and say, listen, are you open to creative financing? And then they're like, and I'll get my commission. Then what's the offer? What do you walk through? What's the next step after that? Yeah. So, so if they say, oh, you know, I might be open to that, or, you know, I think my client could be open to that. I then go to rent, rent reports or rentometer or, you know, a platform like that. And I'll go look at what that house could potentially rent for. Mm -hmm. I need to know what I need to cash flow at, right? I need to know what that number is because I can't make an offer based on the price of the house. I actually don't care. I'd pay him 250 for the house. Mm -hmm. I really, it doesn't matter to me. I just need to know what that rent is going to be. And so if, you know, if they say, oh, well, you know, if the, if the rental meter comes in and it's like, okay, it could, I could potentially rent that house out for, you know, $1,500 a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well then that's great news. I need to be able to have that cash flow. So PITI, right? Insurance, everything number. I need to be closer. So I need a cash flow of $400 a month. That that is the minimum number that I will accept. Mm -hmm. So I would need to make sure that in my sell finance calculator, right? I'm putting everything in and I'll play with it until I get the number I need. And it'll say, okay, now your monthly payment is, you know, $900 a month, right? Okay. Once I get to $900 a month, then I can send them over, you know, a 
some, sometimes I send them an offer. Most of the time I don't, I'll just send them over more of like a letter of intent of like, Hey, this is what I'm thinking. Is this something right? And we'll have a conversation <laughs> of like, Hey, this is what my numbers show would work. Is that something that you guys could accept? Mm-hmm. And the I think what I really with- like about seller finance is it's a win situation because most likely the person who's selling has a reason why they're selling and you're going in and finding out what those reasons are instead of just going and buying, you know, and so whether it's a foreclosure or a bankruptcy or they're getting a divorce or someone has passed away, you are solving that problem by getting that house and getting them to do the seller finance and them being the bank. It just works out win-win. Yeah. No, I genuinely think that, and that's the, the rule of thumb, right? Like don't do it if it's not a good fit for everyone, right? Like that's, you never want to put somebody in a bad situation, right? Because we want to be around for a really long time. So we don't want to uh, affect that for any reason, but that's it. I mean, we have so many stories of thank you, right? Like had you not done this, there's no way we would have been able to move on with their life or be in a better position because it, let's say it's someone that is going in a foreclosure, right? And if it's a foreclosure situation, it's really magical because it actually will help repair their credit. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if, if we say sign a five-year balloon and we're like, hey, we'll give you five years basically to get you, you know, help you get on your feet so that you can eventually go get another mortgage. They won't be able to for the next five years anyway, right? So they might as well let us take over, get them caught up on the payments, right? Mm-hmm. Now the bank is happy with them. We're going to make payments on time every single month. We're going to use a company. There's a couple different ones, but escrow specialists is a company that you can use. It's a third party company that will handle all of the payments. So they'll make the payment to the bank, right? And they'll make the payment to me and they'll pay the insurance. They'll pay everything. I never have to look at the money. I just receive mailbox money, right? (laughs) As we call it. And so, you know, it does create a really great scenario because if for some reason I default, right? And we make this very clear to the, to the owners, right? If we default on your loan and we're more than two payments behind for any reason, you get the house back. So you're not in any worse scenario than you were before. We caught you up on all of your payments and we've made it on time every single month. That's only helped your credit, you know, Mm -hmm. and whatever we dumped into the property to get it fixed up because usually they're pretty trashed, right? then great news when like you come out on the other side in a better situation, right? Than you are now. And they're like, oh yeah. Or you could lose it to the bank and have Mm -hmm. a foreclosure on your name. And I know what a foreclosure looks like. Not Mm -hmm. fun. I don't recommend it. (laughs) I've I've been there. (laughs) Yeah. So I, I do think that like with Jen was saying, it's just, it is a win and people that get it. And sometimes it takes, you know, re mm-hmm. over it. And there are so many scam artists out there that it is hard for people to trust. Yeah. Just- well, and I think that's one of the important things that I think a lot of people don't understand about seller finance or about, you were talking about the title earlier. A lot of times people think, oh, yeah, you're just going to take over their mortgage. No, that's not how it works. You actually use a title company and they, uh, it's all legal. They do everything by the books. It's not just like, hey, we're signing a promissory note that we're going to pay your mortgage. No, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So tell us a little bit about the educational portion. I know you're trying to teach a lot of women to do women uh, real estate investing. So tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. So we created a Facebook group. It's called Creating Her Empire. And it's through Women's Reign, so R- Women Real Estate Investing Network. And it's just an awesome platform for us to all join together. It's just a Facebook group, right? But we do our meetings once a month, so they're live and in person and then on Zoom. Uh, and the whole point is just to teach these concepts, right? Teach them that maybe, you know, half of our women, we just broke 600 women, like I just said. So very exciting for 2020 moving into the next year. We want to grow. We want to be at least a a thousand by the end of 2024. So help us get there, right? Come join in. It's free. You might as well, you know, show up and see how you can, you know, network and collaborate. And there's so many amazing, incredible entrepreneurial women and real estate investing uh, mindset women and most of us. So I had the opportunity to almost interview like, 85 women in our group. And I only did like 15 minute interviews, but I said, Hey, you know, it's free. I just want to see how I can help you in our, in your group or in your, in your business. Like, let me see how I can help you. And it was fascinating to find out that out of those 85 women that signed up for the the call, you know, 50% of them were in a situation where they're going through a divorce 
And they ended up having money because they had to sell their house or they had to sell a business or whatever the circumstances were. So they had a little bit of money, maybe not a ton, but they had some money and they're going, what do I, I do? Have no idea what to do with this. Like I've never maybe been involved with, you know, the business side yeah. of it. I took care of family, you know, for the most part, I stayed out of that realm. And so they're feeling very uneasy, right? Like no idea what to do. And then you know, the, and then it kind of divided into 20, you know, I would say another 20% was like, oh, well, I am actually going through more of a scenario where I don't know what to do with myself because now I'm an empty nester, right? I'm having an identity crisis. I don't know who I am as a woman because I've been a stay at home mom for X amount of years, which is the hardest job on the planet. So, you know, not to, do, you know, undermine that, but it's a totally different walk of life, obviously to, to run your own business. And I love that they're willing to, that if they're going to be in business, they might as well be in investing, right? I love that they're recognizing that and creating generational wealth. It should be the next step as a mother. I'm sorry. Like it should be the next thought in our process of, oh, we've been, you know, we've been taking care of our kids and, you know, making them just grow and figure out how to keep them alive right for so long. Our next thing should be generational wealth. Now, how do I help them? have a life. And so they, they don't have to suffer so that they don't have to worry about gas bills. And, you know, the little mundane things keeps us so trapped in this circle, right? The, the rat race. If we can free our children without having to focus on the mm -hmm. really mundane type bills and have rentals in their name and have, you know, Roth IRAs where it's paying them monthly. Mm -hmm. Now they have generational wealth. They can go actually go change the world because they're not focused on, mom, I can't pay for gas. Okay. We got way bigger problems in the world than I just can't pay for gas. Right. Yeah. So that's definitely the goal is as a mom, I feel very, you know, prideful that I need to make sure that my kids are taken care of and, you know, they have to earn it. They don't just get their, you know, inheritance, obviously they're gonna have to earn it. Uh, and they know it <laughs> very clear. It's like, Good luck. My uh, trust says very clearly these things need to take place before you get it. Right. But I think that's exciting for them too. It's like they have something to work for mm -hmm. and we all can do that for our, our families. We just got to learn how. Mm -hmm. And I love that you're sharing and teaching them the ropes, right? So they're learning how you're not just giving them fish you're teaching them to fish along the way. And I like that you're teaching other women to fish. I was in the same situation, you know, divorced and what am I going to do next? And what should I invest in? And then had some real estate deals go upside down, you know, gotten lot aligned with the wrong people. So that can be a scary thing too. If you jump in with the wrong people and you think you're with the right people and you're trusting those people. And I've learned, you know, control the money wherever you are. If you can control the money, that's the best thing to be able to do. So you can join the Facebook group, everyone. So you'll see me there. I'll be one of the next getting her towards the thousand. You'll see me there as well. So I'm sorry, we got to run. I think we could talk for like a whole nother hour. I still have like a list of questions. I'll have to do it in the Facebook group. So yes. really, thanks so much for joining us today. You were amazing. And I'm going to preface, she does have a workbook that's coming out. We'll announce it on our Facebook page and our social media when her workbook comes out that will train you how to do this as well. So, and if you're thinking about writing a book, we guarantee your book will be a best-selling author with us, but we only take people whose books are inspirational, motivational, or educational. Leave that, leave our world a better place. So those are the kind of people we want to work with. So reach out to us if that's you and hit our author submission button. Have a great week, everybody. I hope you learned a lot. I did. I'm empowered. I'm already going to be looking at the uh, Zillow site, checking out some more properties with a whole different mindset than I was before this podcast started. Maylee, really quick, tell us where the people can go to find you and get more information. Oh, very good. Yes. Yeah. So we have our YouTube channel. So flipping with Mitch and Maylee. So it's M-A-E-L-I. And then uh, you can go to Creating Her Empire, which is just like our women's Facebook group. And then obviously TikTok, Instagram, they're all just flipping with Mitch and Maylee. So everything kind of across the board, you'll find us. We'd love to have you join us. And our YouTube channel is fun. I mean, we show off all the before and afters because we have done over 200 fix and flips. But then we show off, more importantly, the failures because we feel like, one, you learn more from train wrecks, right? And <laughs> from people's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened. And we do. We share all of our dirty laundry. So we want to help you learn from our mistakes so you hopefully don't have to. And you know, awesome. that's a good point. Not every single one you're going to do is be a success. You might have a, a rental that didn't make any money. So yep. then you just move on to the next one.
So it's good to know. Not everything's a, a road paved with gold. So right. um, it's just a journey. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. Hey, are you looking to increase your revenue, build credibility, and elevate your brand? This podcast is brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, an innovative publishing and full spectrum marketing company. They will publish and market your book to make it a number one bestseller. Becoming an author is the best way to market your business. So contact them at EliteOnlinePublishing.com today. All of their authors become number one bestsellers.